NASA will help Europe make its mark on the International Space Station this week when Space Shuttle Atlantis carries the Columbus Laboratory into orbit. The Columbus Lab was named after a great explorer and is designed to sail through the ocean of space as a crucial part of the space station. It will host teams of astronauts hoping to unlock new discoveries. The module from the European Space Agency will ride into orbit aboard Space Shuttle Atlantis to take its place on the cutting edge of space science. Atlantis is also carrying a crew of veteran astronauts and first-time flyers who will attach Columbus and then activate the laboratory in orbit. Well, to this point, uh, we've spent a lot of time building the infrastructure of the space station, so we're really, really looking forward to getting some of the, uh, the lab, laboratory modules and other facilities that will actually be able to use the space station for research, and the Columbus is a big part of that. It is another critical mission for NASA and its international partners as they set the stage for years of intense research in microgravity. So, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> a lot of folks are going to be watching us, and it's very important that we do it right. From NASA's Kennedy Space Center, this is STS-122 live launch coverage. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding with one hour, one minute remaining in this two and one half hour built-in hold. It's during this time that the final inspection team is at the launch pad and they have been working them, working their way down the entire fixed service structure looking for any potential ice formation or anything of issue on the external tank which has been of particular interest uh, on this flow. There have been, uh, besides our connector work, some uh, other tank uh, insulation repairs, but uh, at this point all appears to be looking good on the external tank. This uh, tank weighs approximately 57,000 pounds when it's empty, but 1.6 million pounds now as, uh, as it's on the pad loaded with propellants. The tank is the largest element of the space shuttle system, measuring 154 feet tall and 27.6 feet wide. But uh, despite its very large size, the aluminum skin on the tank is only uh, about an eighth of an inch thick in most cases, yet it still withstands more than six and a half million pounds of thrust during launch. Here we see the final inspection team looking up at the uh, at the tank, getting very close to uh, moving down to the mobile lat mobile launcher platform. Here we see uh, the solid rocket boosters and the external tank in the background. So far there have not been uh, any really significant issues to report as far as the ICE team is concerned, but uh, the uh, lead of the ICE team, Steve Ford, will be giving launch director a report once uh, he returns to the launch control center. STS-122 marks the 121st launch of the Space Shuttle program, the 29th launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis, and the 23rd flight to the International Space Station. The primary payload is the Columbus Laboratory Module, which will be attached to the Node 2 Harmony Module that was launched on the last mission of Space Shuttle Discovery. The laboratory weighs 12.8 tons, is outfitted with two tons of payload facility equipment and 20 experiments. Columbus was funded by 10 of the European Space Agency's member states. Space Shuttle Atlantis on the launch pad weighs 4,523,508 pounds. The orbiter by itself at launch 
weighs 267,341 pounds. That's just 6% of the total space shuttle weight. And by the time Atlantis lands, it will be down to 206,212 pounds. And they had a final exam, or rather a uh, final review of their flight plans all together before they packed away those flight plans into their flight data file packages, and those were then stowed aboard Atlantis uh, early yesterday along with their personal effects. As we mentioned, the uh, crew was awakened about 4.15 this morning, and they're going to be having a weather briefing shortly, the commander and pilot will. At around 10.15, uh, they'll all uh, be in the suit-up room until they leave for the launch pad at about 10.55. They're scheduled to begin boarding Atlantis at 11.25, and then the hatch will be closed and latched at 12.40 p.m. is astronaut Pat Forrester, a veteran of STS-105 aboard Space Shuttle Discovery and STS-117 aboard Space Shuttle Atlantis. He holds degrees from the United States Military Academy at West Point and the University of Virginia, and he's also a graduate of the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School. NASA selected him to become an astronaut in 1996, and he has logged 621 hours in space, which includes more than 25 hours of EBA time accumulated during the four spacewalks. So, Pat, uh, welcome, and uh, I, certainly you must uh, feel like um, w with Atlantis being launched, that's that was your ship, so you certainly know what it's like to get aboard Atlantis today, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, I think we were the last ones to fly on Atlantis, and it's uh, a real pleasure to be here this morning. It's always great to be at KS KSC, especially on a launch day, and so we're looking forward to seeing a great launch day. Well, we we come uh, with the uh, crew that's going to fly, of course, but a number of other astronauts come along to support. Can you tell us what some of the astronauts are who come, what their roles are prior to launch to uh, help us get the, the, the prime crew up upstairs. Well, we pretty much cover the gamut uh, on launch day down here. We've had several astronauts here for the week, and they've been preparing the orbiter, uh, getting switches in configuration, making sure the uh, flight data file and everything is on board Atlantis the way that the crew wants it, and then they've been taking care of the vehicle since then. Uh, we've obviously got uh, some support pilots down here, starting with uh, the chief of our office, Steve Lindsay, who will be the weather pilot. We'll be flying a T-38 and an STA today, checking out the weather. Uh, we've got other people supporting uh, the families and the guests. Uh, we'll do a series of briefings. And then, of course, the support for the public affairs, things like what I'm doing this morning and the other interviews that will be going on. Now, the, uh, the, the STA today, the weather reconnaissance, may turn out to be fairly critical in terms of whether or not we have a uh, go for launch. When uh, Steve Lindsay goes up, what are the kinds of things that he's looking for once he goes up there? Well, like I said, he'll fly two aircraft today. When he goes up in a T-38, he'll be looking at the weather from a big picture. He'll get up high and actually uh, go out around the area away from the Cape just to see what the patterns are doing to make sure that uh, he has a, a pretty good feel for that. And then he'll climb in the STA and he'll actually fly the landing profile that the shuttle would fly if it had to do a return to launch site. And at that point, he's looking for visibility, uh, the ceilings that are required, winds. We have uh, crosswind uh, landing requirements for the shuttle. He'll be looking at all those things. And that's a really critical job. It's probably one of the hardest things he'll do, uh, and that is to have to make that tough decision on a day like today whether the weather's good enough or not. On a clear day, it's fairly easy. Uh, but on a, a day like today, he knows there's a lot of people anxious to go, but he won't, he won't uh, do it unless uh, we're ready. 